So a geometric calibration is simply a mapping of x locations to a pointing vector in the world. And inherently, it's just a mathematical model. Sometimes you may have physical interpretations to some of the parameters of it, such as focal length and principal point, but that is not a requirement in a model. So why do you want to calibrate? To overcome the manufacturing tolerance limitations and extract more performance out of your camera. Looser manufacturing tolerances allow for lower cost, higher yield, but less uniformity amongst all the cameras that you're producing. And a geometric calibration may be used to transform pixel-based metrics into physically-based ones, such as a world-projected spatial frequency response, or an instantaneous field of view per pixel if you are doing radiometric calculations at the pixel level of your sensor. So why do you need to validate a calibration? You want to ensure that the calibration meets the geometric requirements from your system. You want to be able to compare different calibrations or calibration parameterizations and see which one performs better or worse. Um, and it's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to standardize the calibration process. Image Engineering presented one uh, yesterday. I have my own. Um, there are others out in the world. And there's just too many models of how you can model a camera, different use cases. And more and more will be coming. And so what we write down today may be obsolete tomorrow as new things come online. However, if we provide a generalized process, we can make use of that for future uh, camera models. So some desired properties of our validation method. I want it to be indicative of some goodness of calibration. I want it to be camera model agnostic, and I want it to be standardizable. So the first thing, and to me this is probably the most important part, is you need to make sure you get your coordinate system right on the image. Otherwise, you'll do something like crash into Mars or some car. Um, and so there are a number of things that different teams, even within the same company or different companies, just have a natural coordinate system for them to work with. Our sensor manufacturers, it's probably driven by the row readout order, where when you're at the imaging level, there might be a more natural coordinate system for you to be thinking in. Some examples of this are whether you index with zero or one, the direction of the positive axes of each of them, where the integer location is within a pixel. Are you up or down sampling? Are you cropping? Are you appending non-imaging rows to your images that are now going to add an offset? So in order to validate this, it's a fairly simple process, provided you have access to a um, test pattern, specifically a row ramp and a column ramp from your image sensor vendor. If you run the row and column ramp test pattern, you can get at least their unambiguous direct, um, coordinate system from which you can use as a reference one to compare all other ones. Then if the teams or companies involved agree on at least three non-row and non-column collinear reference points. Um, you pick them, and then you find the location in your image coordinates of those three reference points, and then you just perform an ordinary least squares regression to be able to identify the offset in the rows and columns between the two of them. And if you have any non-one R-squared, you've done something wrong. Or you are skipping rows in your sensor. So just as a little toy example with my 6x4 automotive imager, I have marked three points there in, the, in two different team's coordinate systems. And then I just recorded the ones in the image coordinate systems that correspond. And from that, I am able to identify the transforms between my coordinate system and yours. And at least be aware that when I am talking in coordinate system one, that's what it means. So now switching to the K 
camera validation tests. And I am intentionally sort of keeping these somewhat abstract to enable both future work as well as just outline the process. So the first one I am calling a model cam reprojection test. So you have a setup with um, some number of targets in the scene. You measure the location of the targets relative to the camera's coordinate system or its pose. You capture an image of those targets, perform detection of those targets within the image, then project the world point of that target through your camera model to form an image coordinate and then compare your measure with your projected um, coordinates. This is typically a reprojection error from the optimization process, is what you can see this as. The second test is a camera projection test. So in this case, you need a pair of targets or multiple pairs of targets in your scene. You measure the distance from the camera to each target, as well as the distance between the targets. Still, again, taking a picture of the target pairs, and then performing a detection of the pairs within the image, and then projecting out through the camera model into the world, find by the measured distance, you now get two 3D points, and then you can compute the distance between those 3D points and compare that to the distance that you measured between those targets. Um, and in this case, there are sort of two configurations of this test. You have a, a simultaneous localization and mapping where either your targets are spatially separated in the approximate direction that your car would be going, or you physically move the camera if the overlap between the targets is insufficient to be able to um, re fully resolve the targets there. Um, or you have sort of a distortion configuration where you have your targets well separated within the seat. The third test is a triangulation test, and this requires a stereo pair. I suppose you could go with a triple camera and a trifocal tensor, but that is not covered in this talk. Um, and so here, it's a very similar test setup once again. You create um, your test setup with some number of targets in the scene. You measure the location of the targets relative to the reference coordinate system, cam reference camera coordinate system capture an image of the targets with both cameras, perform detection of the targets within the image from each camera, and then you perform a triangulation of the target using the detected points. And then your error is then the dis difference in the distance between the known location of the targets and the one that was triangulated. So, so far I have been using targets somewhat loosely. So some examples of a target, you could just have a uh, chessboard, in which case you have your checker intersection. You could have a dot. Or if you are trying to test your entire system, including your camera system's uh, detection, you could use an automotive target, such as a stop sign, or a car, or a pedestrian. Um, and so this is one of the ways I'm trying to build in flexibility for testing multiple levels of the image processing chain while still writing something down that we can hopefully standardize within B2020. Um, some target placement choices. They should not only be driven by a use case. And I have been mentally going under the uh, frame of reference of test like you drive. So I don't drive with a target three feet from my car, there are targets much further in the world, so you want to be exercising more real-world uh, scenarios. So you, the distances to targets, from a defensive driving standpoint, you're taught two seconds or three seconds following distance. You might be doing a defensive driving, scanning 15 seconds ahead for any potential um, hazards that may come up in the long term. The then target placement within the field of view, you want to be exercising the entire usable portion of the camera field of view. You always want to be interpolating rather than extrapolating. 
Um, and you might, rather than having many, many targets in the scene, you may rotate and or translate your camera to be able to get full test coverage from a more limited target setup. Um, as for the target separation, in particularly the projection test, <laughs> either the amount your car will travel forward in n frame times of your sensor, or thinking about the, si the separation being the size of automotive specific targets, so a pedestrian, a bicycle, a car, a truck. And then you can also repeat targets in similar areas of the field of view, so that way you can be less reliant on your target detection algorithm's performance and somewhat separate out out of family measurements if your target detector is not performing as well from the calibration itself. As for thresholds, <clears throat> um, we want to set our pass fail thresholds based on the requirements flow down. At some point, there's a requirement someplace that looks like you don't want to hit a person when driving. And then that flows down to how far ahead do I need to visual to get information and what error do I need to be able to detect something with. And this might be different whether you're using a camera only configuration or if you have LiDAR as well to augment and actually do the ranging and you're just doing the camera information for uh, feature identification. Um, and the other important thing is to perform an error propagation through these test setups I probably at this point have 40 or so pages of calculus to be able to do this for some models, where you're trying to figure out how well do I need to know the test distances and positions, and what impact does that have on my test? Um, because we want to ensure that our test setup contributes a minimal error to the final metric. If you're testing a um, narrow field of view, long range camera, being off one meter at a thousand meters probably is okay. But if you're testing a wide field of view camera, being off 10 centimeters at might be problematic. So it's always going to be going back to your specific use cases. Um, just as a comparison of the various test metrics, um, so the reprojection can be used for monocams, stereo pairs, multicams, um, same with the projection where the triangulation test can only be used on stereo pairs. The reprojection and triangulation test covers both the intrinsics and extrinsics of your camera model. Um, the knowledge that you need, so you always need your camera model no matter which one you're doing and you always need some of nominal reference points that your camera is centered. Typically, this is the entrance pupil position, the on-axis entrance pupil position of your camera, but maybe your model um, uses a different point. Um, for the reprojection one, you also need to know the camera pose and target locations. For the projection test, you need to know the distances to and between the targets. And the triangulation, you need to uh, know the pose and target locations. Uh, the reprojection error is often used in the calibration process, but it's not really tied to automotive use cases of identifying things. It's much more useful in the ray tracing simulation world. Um, the projection test, you don't require knowledge of your camera's pose. Um, however, the uncertainty of the test is deeply coupled with your uh, camera parameters. The triangulation test can actually be used for stereo pair use cases, but it requires exactly two cameras to do. Um, so when you're comparing cameras, which is, model is better? You always want to go with lower error, but sometimes you're going to have maybe a lower error in the center and a higher error on the edge. And based on your use case, maybe that's acceptable, maybe that's not. And if two uh, cameras are within the test uncertainty, they're so within the test margin, 
So if your test is only good up to a certain amount, you start losing the ability to discriminate uh, goodness of cameras. Um, and then two cameras could be considered functionally, or two camera models, sorry, could be considered functionally equivalent if they fall within whatever pass-fail limits that were flowed down from your requirements. So in conclusion, I uh, presented a image coordinate validation methodology. I um, presented three different metrics that could be used for validating a geometric camera calibration, and then I started to um, present tying the test configuration to automotive use cases. Thank you. of them at various points in the past few years. Mm -hmm. I haven't done end-to-end -end ones on my current setup, so just last week we finally put together the initial part of new validation setups for being able to test various cameras. But always too much work and not enough spare time. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? establishing a at one point and then testing again at some other point, uh, we have not looked at the much finer scale like thermal uh, variations and calibrations. Okay, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Paul.